actually quite a sunny morning and um, I've still got a bit of a cold. It's going on and on. It's been the winter of the cold. So I'm a little bit croakier than I usually am. But I thought, um, loads of people say to me, uh, they leave comments on this channel going, oh my goodness, you never stop. You just keep going, going, going. Where do you get your energy from? So I thought this week I would show you um, I, I do believe energy creates energy, and I do believe the more you do, the more you can do. So I do fit a lot into my day, and um, I do an exercise routine every day of some sort. And I'm going to actually show you a bit later on the latest exercise routine that makes sense of all the exercise I've ever done in my life since I was five. So I'll take you to that in a moment, and it's actually downstairs where I live. Um, but... Uh, and also, can I just say, it's my birthday today, so I'm very excited. I don't usually, I don't ever usually big up my birthday, but on social media, you can't get away from it. Everybody knows, don't they? Um, it just throws it up at you. But um, I'm wearing my birthday outfit. I bought a new pair of trousers, which I will show you in a minute. But I thought, first of all, I would show you what I take in the morning. Now, I take supplements. Last week I showed you what I ate and a lot of you said this isn't enough. I do take supplements and I do think they help actually. And I'm gonna show you what I take in the morning. And I'm not a medic, I need to say that. So this isn't, these aren't medically proven to work, but they work for me. So let me show you what I take every single morning um, to sort of get me pepped up. First of all, and I've spoken about this before, Barbara Cartland many years ago, when I interviewed her 30 years ago, swore by an enzyme called CoQ10, which I'm led to believe uh, releases energy from your the cells in your body, and it is depleted as you get older. So I've always taken CoQ10 for about 30 years, and now there is a purer form, which is called Ubiquinol. It's quite expensive, in fact, it's very expensive. But um, I take one of those a day. So that's ubiqu Ubiquinol, and that's 100 uh, milligrams of Ubiquinol. The second thing I take is for my joints, because as I get older, I feel that I need, uh, sometimes my wrists actually get stiff. The rest of me seems fine, but I take a green lip muscle uh, supplement which uh, also has vitamin C in. I think to make it work it probably has to have vitamin C in. This is the one, it's C-Tone. None of this is sponsored by the way, nothing on this video is sponsored. But um, this is the one I love, it's Potter's C-Tone. I take one of those a day. I actually give one of these to Matilda every week as well so that um, her joints will keep working. And finally, um, somebody on the comments last week said, Joe, you need to take collagen. I do, and I have been for some time. I take imidine, um, and I've been taking this for a long time. They come in sachets, and you're meant to take two in the morning and two at night. Well, I find that's a bit excessive. It's also extremely expensive to do that, so I only take two in the morning, um, but I've been taking them for years, so I reckon it's probably building up. The good thing about Imidin is Boots do three for two. Again, not sponsored. So that's what I take. Those are the supplements I take in the morning. If I'm feeling a little bit fluey or coldy, I will up the vitamin C, but otherwise, that is it. Now, would you like to see my birthday suit <laughs> would you like to see my birthday trousers so i bought these today um to celebrate my birthday and i love them i'll show you the whole outfit of the day So there you go, the trousers are woolen trousers and they're Marlene Berger and they are half price in the sale if you want them. And this is an old American vintage cashmere sweater that I've had for some time, but I think they, I, I'm quite getting into the sloppy look now. Anyway, I'm going to take you down to where I exercise and it's literally uh, just close to where I live and I can just literally grab my exercise gear and go down there. So this is what I do most mornings if I'm not doing a pure yoga class. So come with me. So, oh, you feel me? So, I am on the way to extend bar. I know I look like Max Wall in these tights and these great big shoes. 
I need to tell you before we get there, I have not done one of these classes for a long time because um, of work. But anyway, as I say, we've had permission so we can film some of it, but not everyone wants to be filmed. So turn that off now and let's get going. There is something, the moment you go into a studio, there's a bar, you go, oh yes. And then when you hear the phrases like plie, tondu, you go, oh yes. But then it's mixed with Pilates and it's mixed with cardio. So it all makes sense of your life. For me, this has made sense of my life. But when I said I was a dancer, nowhere near like Katie. Who did you dance with? So I used to dance in the US and I came from a dance family, so a complete dance background. And I danced when I started from three all the way up until university. Um, and I did everything from ballet, tap, and jazz. Um, but as I got a little bit older, I started to compete. I've kind of done a little bit of everything, but movement is my life. And when I discovered Extendbar, it just, like you said, it made sense for my life. And it was like my, my journey had transitioned on, and I needed to find something that that love of movement could come back and just spark it. So I've been able to do this through my pregnancy, before, beyond, after. Um, our clients are incredible. Like yourself, everybody comes from such different backgrounds. Um, I'm not sure who we're allowed to film, but you will see all ages, literally all ages, because, there's, because the teaching is so hands-on, you cannot, they will never let you injure yourself. And the a class is now, I've been to yoga classes with 50 plus people and I, I'm on my mat thinking, that's potential injury. It will never happen in this situation because they're like hawks, these teachers, they can see. And you work at your own, well not your own pace, not when Katie's teaching, but what are your own ability basically. So uh, we won't show the camera out there, but there are women my age, even older, can you believe, and a lot younger as well. So it's money in the bank. If you start doing this for your body, it's money in the bank, as I say, as you get older. It's incredible. Some of my clients bring their 12, 13 year old daughters. And I think oh, it's such a beautiful thing to see that the love of movement is being made at such a young age. Because even at that moment, they're sitting, studying and at their desk and, you know, hunching forward. And it's just that we're here for positive movement. So for us, it is that positive addiction. We love it. We're here because it works. So I'm going to leave the link below. We're also going to film some of it now because Katie's got permission from some of the ladies and gents. I think there might be some men here as well. And George is going to film um, from around and then he'll film through the door. So he's not going to be intrusive. And also you start, it's 55 minutes it class, is. isn't it? Yes. But there are all different classes here. So, I mean, I'll put the link below, but there are classes that are shorter than that. They start very early in the morning. And although this is in Marylebone, um, people come from a very wide catchment area. area. Because this is the only one, literally, in this area, in Westminster. So, thank you. I'll let you get on. Bring them in. Thanks, Joe. Yeah.
Apparently on the way. I'm heading off to record an episode of my Dogs in the City podcast with Clive Anderson, the wonderful Clive Anderson. He's going to give me a run for his money. Um, I'm late. I'm really late because I'm stuck in traffic. Uh, Matilda is here. Tilt. Tilt. Tilda. Well, she's obviously half asleep. Um, <laughs> They could, you could just see the top of her head. I need to picture this. She needs a camera of my own and then I can edit the two. Um, yes, I'm late because I'm stuck in traffic and I, I'm i going to Hackney, to Kiss Old Park in Hackney, which I, oh, here we go. I always think won't take me long. <laughs> but as you know, if you watch these vlogs long enough. 20 yards, turn right onto Park Crescent. Uh, I'm not good east because it's the one part of London I've never lived. Anyway, Cliss Old Park, one of the, I think, one of the original dog-friendly parks in London, to be honest. I don't even know what breed of dog he has. This is so bad. I used to, this is what has happened since I've got older, I used to do so much research before any of my interviews. And, I, and this isn't an excuse. I have learned it is better to know very little and discover it as you meet these people, except Clive Anderson. Right onto Park Crescent. Then turn right onto Maryland Road. Clive Anderson will have interviewed even more people than I have, and I've interviewed something like 20,000 people in my career. He will have interviewed even more, so he will know that I haven't done my research about him. But I mean, there isn't a great deal about him that um, I don't think there's hidden turn secrets. Right onto Maryland Road. And his. Uh, relationship with his dog hasn't really been written about. Anyway, we will find out. What do you think? This is an American vintage sweater, which, oh, it's very low. I believe certainly in the institutions that are at the heart of conservatism. She's um, fast asleep. Roger, I think, fundamentally this sweater is really annoying me. Well, anyway, here we go. I am going to be so late. I have a new producer. I have Alice. Gosh, you can't hear me. Alice is producing today the podcast. Kate uh, isn't today, so it'll be Alice, who I think I've filmed with before, so I think you'll recognise Alice. Stay in the right two lanes. Oh, right, okay. Wrong lane, aren't I? Okay. Well, the left lane's the bus lane. six miles. Turn left onto Barrett Street. Okay, I better turn this off. I've left Matilda in the car because she's an age now where she can't actually keep up with these uh, contributors and their dogs. And I think I'm here to meet Clive Anderson and his dog. And it seems that he look at these two. Beautiful. Oh, one's decided to go the other way. Um, it is, um, it's apparent that uh, he, he walks his dogs every morning, so they're probably quite young and energetic, and Matilda just can't keep up. Um, 
I'm meeting Alice, as I said in the car. She uh, is a podcast producer, not my usual producer for the podcast, although I've worked with Alice a lot um, because it's usually Kate. But look, this is, we plan to meet here. I'm just hoping this is the right place. This is the old Clissold Park um, house, mansion. And there's really, I mean, this is in the East End, if you're not familiar with London. This is the East End. Look at the church. There are deer, there are deer in a field over there. I love it. I love, I love being in London when you can get to see animals um, enjoying themselves amongst all this urbania. I mean, we're surrounded by tower blocks. <laughs> it's wonderful. Anyway, it's taken me ages to park because um, because uh, you know, in Hackney they don't like cars. You're the enemy. You're meant to be on a bicycle, and um, yes, yeah, so there's very few public parking spaces. But I managed it in the end. But I'm on limited time, as ever. Morning. <laughs> You're such an East London girl. Look at you. I'm on a I'm on a parked meter. Here is Alice. You all know Alice. You know Alice because Alice did actually the first ever podcast we ever did yeah, with Julian Clary. I ate, I ate garlic, sorry. <laughs> um, and she's an award-winning uh, podcast producer. So um, we've only got her on loan for today. And Clive Anderson, I'm a bit worried. Why? Because, well, he's so quick. Do you know what I mean? He's really sharp. Very bright. It's, yes. <laughs> So um, let's wish us luck. I'll turn this off so we can get sorted because we're here early. So we can sort, well, we can't set up. There's nothing to set up. We just hit the ground running, don't we really? Yeah, do a little intro. Yeah. Is it your, oh look, you've already covered your sal saddle. Well, it's because it was wet because it's so broken. It was like it's sitting on a wet sponge. So I did you drive, it. did you drive, did you ride with that? Yeah. So I don't get a wet bum, otherwise I have a soggy, soggy this is a This is a real <laughs> intrepid cyclist. Right, I'll turn this up. This is so amazing up here. Clive, can I just say thank you very much? Yes. Hang on, I'm, I don't want to do that. It shows more, <laughs> <laughs> more belly. <laughs> Alice, wasn't that brilliant? Yeah. Brilliant, thank and you And this is much. Albert. This is Albert. So it's, smile at the camera, just click Albert. your fingers or something, just to... Uh, not that's going to work because he can't hear. Oh, uh, you've been so good. This is one of the best. So I urge you to go to BBC Sounds. We're going to post it, I think, next week. It could go up next Thursday. So make sure you follow it. Thank you. <laughs> that is it from me this week. So I'm trying to keep out of the sunshine. It's gorgeous, actually. Um, try and listen to the podcast Dogs in the City with Clive Anderson because... He was so witty and sharp, and I love his rescue dog, Albert. He's gorgeous. Also, Extend Bar, the studio where I exercise um, most mornings, they are doing a very special offer if you're a newcomer. It's incredibly generous. I can't qualify because I already go there, but I've put the link below, so have a look. None of this is sponsored. I just like the couple that run the place, Danny and Katie. They, they just, the place is so inviting. Everyone works at their own pace. And um, it, it really works. You focus on various parts of the body and you feel great when you leave. So I'll leave the links to everything below. Have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday at 10. Bye. I'm walking, hear the knee.